Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this uh, webinar on the eLife Innovation Sprint 2020. Uh, my name is Emmy. I'm the Innovation Community Manager at eLife and the main organizer of the Sprint. Um, this call um, operates under an open agenda, so I'm going to post a link in the chat box uh, so all of you can see it and you can access it um, there. And there's a roll call section. Please feel free to sign in with your name, pronouns, and affiliation, or any social that you'd like to, uh, you know, let the community know about. Um, and um, yeah, we will uh, be beginning very shortly. Um, the aim of this webinar is to tell you a bit about what the sprint is, and for those, especially for those of you who have been at the sprint before or have heard about this event before from some other people. Um, just to highlight some of the changes that we've made to the event. Um, and also this is a great, great chance for you to sort of ask questions and to give us feedback on how we could make this event a better experience for you as well. Um, so yeah, welcome. <laughs> so I hope everyone can see my slide at the moment with the, um, very colorful, sunny picture of uh, the events last year and our participants. Um, so this is the third eLive Innovation Sprint. Um, and this year, we, it is scheduled to take place in September during uh, from the second to the third, two full days. At the moment, um, because of the current situation, of course, we cannot be 100% sure if this will still be a physical event. All I can say is we're closely monitoring the situation. The uh, venue in Cambridge, UK has been booked for the event, but um, we are making the necessary preparation in case uh, moving online is a prudent decision uh, closer to the, the time of the event. So um, learning on the go, if anyone has any ideas of you know, how to better facilitate collaboration and project work uh, remotely, I'd be extremely interested to, to learn from your so um, for those of you who are new to the eLife Sprint and what it is about, um, it is a very collaborative event. I try to not call it a hackathon, but I guess it's also easy for people to think about sort of working together in teams. So we're hoping to bring together 70 researchers, developers, designers, product technologies, uh, publishers, community managers, uh, policy specialists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, to come together to develop open prototypes that will redefine the ways that we do and share research. So um, if you're a researcher, you'll be, you'll be familiar with you know, the current situation with sort of research communication. I think the COVID uh, crisis has really highlighted some of the flaws in this, in this current system of journal publication. We believe that there's a big opportunity to use better the web technology that we've developed over the past years um, to you know really make the dissemination of research output faster to more people easier and make it all more interactive and that this you know infrastructure that we built should be open and should be community driven so really designed by the people that will ultimately use it and that was our motivation to to build this event is to bring together the researchers who know this problem domain very well and the technologists, the, so the web technologists, the machine learning and engineers, the data scientists, et cetera, the, design, the UX designers who can actually turn those problems to design solutions together with, with researchers and to create these prototypes that would allow us to push uh, open science, open research communication and change research culture as well. Um, so this is the eLife Sprint. Um, just to sort of give you an idea of what projects were worked on in the last two years that we've, we've had the event. So Plaudit, as some of you may have heard, is a lightweight mechanism that allows researchers to endorse scientific publication. So traditionally, you know, research output is sort of validated by the peer review and the journal name that in which the journal is, uh, the, the research is published. Um, 
and this has encouraged many toxic behaviors and and unhelpful power hierarchies and by uh, Plaudit has this aim to crowdsource and open up this review and endorsement process to you know the research community um, in a very simple a simplistic manner so you can have a you can search for Plaudit uh, online and you can download this Chrome extension or Firefox extension um, and you can endorse this work which is linked to your ORCID and the DOI of the paper so this was a very simple design and this um, uh, project was supported by eLife Innovation uh, with funding and also with promotional support after uh, the sprint. Um, another project that started at the eLife Sprint in 2018 is called Octopus. This was um, started by uh, a group of, uh, again, researchers and developers together to really uh, go back from the beginning and imagine what research communication could look like if we forget about all the papers and journals that, that now exist. Um, and so they, they sort of worked out this, this prototype, this framework of uh, making research output communication more granular so you can communicate methods separately from results, from hypotheses, et cetera. Um, and the project lead, Alex Freeman, has since then uh, taken this project and really drove it uh, forward uh, having you know, secure collaboration with the UK Reproducibility Network um, and also won a small grant um, in an in a idea uh, uh, competition. And uh, yes, yeah, really, the work has, has really taken the work from the Eli Sprint for, uh, further into, you know, uh, they're also ready to launch this year, I believe. Um, and finally, this is a, a project that started last year at the eLife Innovation Sprint 2019. So this team looked at um, building a, a platform that would highlight low visibility preprints. So in the world of information overload, um, there are too many papers, we don't have enough time to read them and we rely on you know, discovery algorithms on Google Scholar or PubMed to tell us what we should read, basically. A lot of people don't go past the first couple of pages in terms of you know, the, the research uh, what the search engine shows um, and that um, because of how the uh, these the discovery algorithm, algorithms are not open um, you don't know what be, what lands on how things lands on the first page of your search results and so this project really aims to sort of re-evaluate that and to design a way where uh, to bring more light to um, preprints that uh, will have a lower visibility on these traditional search uh, platforms. Um, and so, so yeah, so, you know, they spent, the team spent a lot of time sort of doing user interviews at the sprint, understanding what, a, what low visibility means and how to calculate that, building the infrastructures um, that would allow, uh, uh, you know, calculation of this shadow index and the platform to highlight the work that you know, they deem to have low visibility. Um, so there's a technical challenge there and there's also a cultural challenge there, um, which they have tried to solve. And it's really great to see the collaboration that has taken place. So um, I sort of tried to mention, cover the range of uh, people that we have at the Sprint and also the, the roles that they could play. So if you join us at the event, um, you could um, be, you could lead a project, you can lead a team to, um, work on an idea that you all develop together. You could be a technical contributor, so if you're a software developer, um, you could you could help turn some of those ideas into code. Um, and um, if you are um, if you are skilled in certain areas like UX, for example, you can also contribute to multiple projects and be an expert consultant uh, ready to contribute. Um, you could help with documentation and communicating the project openly during the event um, to make sure that you uh, take the best advantage of the other people that are around at the sprint. You could help user test some of these products as, as they go. Um, and finally, this is new opportunities, but we're hoping to get some sprint participants to be mentors of uh, newcomers to the event and the open science space. 
So um, another change that we've made to the event this year um, is based on feedback from last year. So we've decided to split the uh, application process into two stages. We're now open for project proposal submission. Um, what that means is we're basically collecting ideas of projects that you'd like to work on. Um, so uh, on the web on our website, which I'll show later, we'll have a, uh, there's a there's a form where you if you can complete the form, um, you'll be submitting a project and then you will also be committed to lead that project at the event. Um, and so that's opened all the way until April 13. We will evaluate uh, these project proposals and select the ones uh, that we would like to see uh, worked on at the sprint. And then we will communicate those decisions the week after afterwards. Um, as project leads, you have one week to accept that invitation. It's all very tight, you know. Um, and then uh, we will openly announce the projects that uh, we've accepted and at the same time open up for what we call general application. So if you don't have a project idea that you want to work on at the sprint, you should hold fire at the moment and you should wait until April 27 when we open up for general application so you can apply and also see the projects that you will get to work on at the event. Um, that will be open all the way until May 24th uh, and then we will be um, evaluating the general applications and uh, also communicating those decisions as well. Um, so what projects are we looking for? Uh, so this again is a small change from from sort of the last iterations of the sprint. So in the past, we focused primarily on research communication and ways to change the way that research is consumed, shared, evaluated, and discovered. This is still there, but we want to broaden the scope of the sprint a bit because um, at eLife we do care about things beyond research communication. We you know want to use um, the community that we've got together and the technical expertise that we have to drive forward also a healthy uh, research culture. Um, and so I'm highlighting here on the slide um, some of the uh, new sort of themes that we're covering as part of the sprint. Uh, so you could work on the technical solution to promote research collaboration. Um, you could if we design a website that will help uh, build healthy research environments in terms of focusing on issues in uh, mentoring or mental health in academia, et cetera. Um, the sort of project requirements, the sprint remains at its very core a technical event. So while you know we welcome all sorts of contribution, uh, the, we do want the main output of the project to be technical. So thinking software, apps, databases, websites, et cetera. Um, the projects must be open source because we believe that this is the way where that will allow innovative, innovations to be built upon each other and to be reused. The project should be ideally at its ideation stage with very little or no prior development. So you can come in with a with a completely new idea and you know we would be able to help the event will be able to help you drive that to a prototype or or an mvp even um, although if you do have a slightly more mature project if you can demonstrate exactly how the sprints community can add value to that would be happy to consider your proposal you could submit your project in a team up to three people uh, we really encourage you to submit in the team because it really helped avoid the situation where you will be the only person working on the project um, at the sprint. Uh, and also, you know, with more people, you just have more ideas and better ideas in general. So uh, I understand that this is not essentially, this is not necessarily easy for everyone. So we're really working hard to try and find ways to help anyone out. So if you have an idea and you don't have a, a collaborator, please tweet uh, at us at eLife Sprint uh, with the hashtag eLife Sprint um, and we'll help you amplify that idea and reach out to folks. If you're not on Twitter, just email me at innovation at eLifeSciences.org. The email is also at the end of this slide deck. 
so I'll put it on the agenda as well. Um, and I'll I'll do my best to <laughs> our team will do our best to help you out. Um, so the the process when you submit when you use that form to submit your project proposal, uh, the form sort of guides you through the things that we the things that we think about we think a good project proposal should think about. So it's a bit long, but it's a good lean process to help you iron out some of those ideas into a practical project that you can work on in those two days. So um, once you submit that first form, all the submitters in that proposal will get a link in, in an email to a second form that they should fill in. And that second form allows us to collect information on um, you know, the travel support that you may require in order to attend the information. So it's very important that you, as submitters, you complete both forms and that's con considered a completed pro project proposal. So I'm sorry, this is very complicated, but it's necessary. And that's why I'm also doing this webinar to try and explain this. The link to the form is down here. It's also accessible from our website. Um, so how do we pick the proposals? Um, this is all this information is on our website as well, but just to want to sort of bring you through and highlight a bit um, uh, some of the things that we'd like to see in a project. So we want a good project proposal we think should be tackling a well-defined problem that is in line with our mission with the event's mission. So the themes that I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, the solution or the work that you're proposing should be feasible within the two-day event and the sprint should be adding value to the project. Um, we want submitters to actively think about how you would engage the sprint's participants um, to maximize the contributions that you can get out of everyone there um, and also incorporating thinking into sort of the cultural diversity and the backgrounds and all the all the aspects of the, of the dimensions of diversity that are there at the sprint uh, would be a big plus to your project proposal and finally you know we do want um, proposals that have carefully considered uh, whether they're building something that is important to the event and to the community um, and so the again like I, I feel like the form should help you out a bit with this if um anything is not clear please feel free to email us and we're happy to explain a bit further but uh yeah be creative we'd like we'd love to see you know what sort of things you'd like to build um in terms of participation the event is open to everyone around the world um if it is going to be a physical event. We would uh, be able to, we will hope to be able to cover the travel costs for folks who otherwise would not be able to attend. So um, last year, for example, we've supported 23 participants in their travel and their accommodation, uh, visas, and also childcare. So um, there is a attendance support policy that is currently on our website. Um, please go have a look. And we, again, is extremely flexible and we, based, we, we want to emphasize that we really want to have a diverse community of uh, participants at the sprint. And so, you know, if there's anything that you need in order to participate and we haven't thought of, please let us know as soon as possible so that we could make the necessary arrangements to make that happen. Um, and this is of course all subjected to, you know, the event being physical. Uh, with the event potentially moving online, it comes with a separate set of um, support that may need to be made available and we'll be definitely be looking into that if, you know, if we will, as we will be making that decision. So we'll make sure that all the information around, you know, the virtual event, if it happens, will be carefully communicated and clearly communicated um, when we make that announcement. And yeah, finally, just want to highlight a small opportunity uh, for folks who um, have been to the sprint before, especially, or, you know, you are, 
quite experienced in the in the open science space and community. Um, we thought very hard about onboarding this year, and we'd love to help newcomers a bit more. Um, it could be quite daunting to be heading into a space with with 69 other people not knowing anyone, maybe in a different country, speaking not your mother tongue. And we'd love for you know our past uh, our, our community members to use their experience and knowledge to uh, help new community members. And so uh, that if you have been at the sprint before um, and you'd like to help mentoring, there is a uh, option for indicating this on your submission forms. So uh, I'm outlining some of the time requirements here. Um, we, uh, we'd like you to, as a mentor, we'd like you to have a 15 to 30 minute video conference with your mentee prior to the sprint, and also check in and meet your mentee during the event. Um, in sort of return for for your contribution, for your extra contribution, um, we're offering a one hour remote mentorship training sometime in August, hopefully. Um, and that's optional, but um, it, we, you know, if you're interested in um, furthering your mentorship skills, this could be a good session to attend. So this is just a little opportunity and we hope that you'll be, you know, happy to help on board and bring people into this fantastic community. Okay, so uh, I am done with speaking <laughs> uh, for now. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, uh, there's a couple of options, a couple of ways for you to do this. There is the open agenda, which I've posted in the chat box, and there's a Q&A um, section under line uh, 44. I've seen already some folks putting um, questions there, so it's great, I'll start answering them. And the other ways is that you can use the, I believe, uh, the question pane in the uh, GoToWebinar um, menu, uh, control panel, and also there should be a raise your hand button somewhere. So if you want to ver verbally ask your question, use the raise your hand button so I can unmute you. Um, and so, Please feel free to put down your questions in one of those three places. Um, I will start answering some of them now, but please go ahead and put them down. Um, so I am going to start with the uh, question pane. So Katie asked, uh, are the gen is the general application open uh, meant for people who haven't submitted proposal but still want to collaborate? Uh, yeah, short answer, yes. So um, you may not have a clear idea of what you want to work on, but you want to contribute to the community and some of the solutions that are developed there. So hold fire, the general application will open on April 27th. We will publish the projects that you will have a chance to contribute to at the sprint at the same time as we open. So you will know. So there will be sort of 12, 14 projects there, hopefully. Um, and that's the moment you should submit an application, a general application to us. So I hope that answers your questions. If not, uh, please follow up with the question with the question pane. Um, uh, you know, I I'm sensing this is about uh, the mentors. So is the mentoring open only for previous sprint participants or for anyone interested in mentoring? Um, I haven't decided yet. I don't see why folks who, uh, you know, folks can't join if you're interested in mentoring anyway. I would like to offer that to uh, first uh, with priority to um, the folks who have signed up to be mentors on uh, the, for the eLife Innovation Sprint for newcomers. But I wouldn't say no to, you know, you joining if you haven't been to the sprint, but would like to learn about mentoring anyway. So, um, and also, I just want to clarify, this is very difficult to clarify, actually, but um, if you have been to other hackathons in the space, for example, or ha any hackathons in general, or are familiar with the eLife communities, et cetera, et cetera, I, th I think, you know, you are well qualified to onboard newcomers. If you feel confident doing that, that is. Um, and so 
please go ahead and sign up as a mentor anyway, if you are happy to do that. Um, I'm open to opening that mentoring training to also folks that are not mentors, but I'll prioritize it for folks who are mentors. I hope that's sort of clear. <laughs> I'm just thinking on my, on, on my, on my feet right now. Um, that's a great idea, thank you. Yo, uh, moving on to the agenda now. Uh, is it acceptable or useful to submit multiple project proposals? Yes, it is acceptable. Yes, it is useful if you have multiple great ideas. Um, yeah, exactly. So I guess if that does happen and if we would like to take all your project proposals, you would have to make a decision. Uh, <laughs> so if that happens, we'll ask you, you know, have, can we work with you to either, you know, take your load off leading both projects at the sprint? Um, would you have any ideas as to, you know, someone else you could maybe bring into leading one of those projects, one of your co-submitters? Um, and uh, yeah, I think it has to be sort of evaluated on day by day, uh, case by case basis. But definitely, if you have multiple fantastic ideas, please submit them. Thomas, when do you think you will decide whether you make the event online only? I want to say as soon as possible, <laughs> but with the current situation, it's extremely difficult to predict. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I can't answer. <laughs> um, but when we, if we do and when we do, we'll make sure that it's spread wide and far and clear and well communicated on the website. So we'll email everyone. Um, we'll make sure everyone gets the, gets the message. Uh, Katie, is it necessary to identify a technical lead member before submitting or can we expect to find someone to work with through the general application process? Great question. Um, if, let me, so I think it is, I want to say that I, I want to strongly encourage trying to find a technical lead, uh, co-lead before submitting. Again, if that's something that is difficult for you, either tweet at Eli, uh, uh, hashtag at Eli Sprint or email us and I'll try and help you out. Um, the, yeah, so it's it's sort of difficult to, you know, overfit this dynamics, if you see what I mean. So, and when we, you know, if we want to accept your project proposal, we think that is a great proposal and we really want folks to work on it. So, um, it is not theoretically necessary, but it's strongly encouraged and we will try our best to help you out if this is difficult. I hope that's sort of an okay answer to the question. <laughs> Thank you. Y'all have been very understanding. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, so, so yeah, so thanks for all the questions. And again, this is not the only place you can do it. And thanks for, for your time and for attending this. Um, and, um, there is on the screen right now, there's, there's our website, which is sprint.elifesciences.org. Uh, email us at innovation at .org if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to follow us on Twitter, retweet our tweets so that more folks can know about the event and this opportunity. Um, that would be very, very helpful. Thank you. Um, and there are two other sections currently on the agenda. Um, you know, we want to find out for those of you who were at the sprint before or have just heard about it, what do you like about it so far? Um, what would you like to see plan uh, differently from what I've described so far? Um, if you are really have, you know, if you have time and if you have uh, thoughts having been to similar events or in other spaces or thing or, or have, have joined recent remote hackathons, for example. Um, again, all thoughts would be very helpful. Uh, I like the wellness booth idea. We do have a quiet room at the event for those of you who um, get tired from social interactions or anything, or you know, it's, it's a space for folks to to relax a bit and also uh, to just have that space to be able to um, be quiet. Uh, and 
I'm one of those people that needs it. So we're definitely having quiet room. I'm not sure about the bean bags, but we'll try our best. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much all for attending. Um, if you, yeah, again, if you have any questions, all three channels on the screen at the moment, and please keep, uh, I would love to see um, project proposals from everyone. Um, so please remember the April 13th deadline. We'll be strict about it. So <laughs> thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm going to end the webinar now, but if you have further questions, you can also put them on the agenda now, and I'll be happy to answer them uh, asynchronously right uh, in the next sort of 10, 15 minutes. Thank you all.